Today we're going to talk about how to install a servo on your Visec Spider version 1.1. Now here's the servo type that I found that works best for me. Now it doesn't always line up to exactly the zero position due to the ribbing on here so you'll have to adjust for that in your setup. But I'll show you how to actually adjust this angle wise in a second. So let me review a couple of quick things about the servo because it's a little confusing. The wiring down here you can see that it's brown then it's red then it's yellow. So the brown is ground, the red is voltage being 5 volts, and then the yellow is your signal. So in order to set this up we have to find where our servo pins are which are down in here for the BL touch, but we need to know which ones they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to check that. So if you go over to your desktop on your computer and you go to the GitHub page for FISEC, you can click on the FISEC Spider. And inside here they have a bunch of information on wiring. But I pulled up a diagram over here so that you can see it more clearly. So you can see that there's a ground voltage and then there's a PA2. Let me zoom in a little so you can see this. So then you see ground and then you see another signal pin over here. I can't make it out, but we could figure that out inside the pins file. Essentially, these three pins are for your servo. Now there are other ways to hook up servos, but this is the basic way to do it. So I'll show you how to do this now. So if we go over to VS Code and we open this up, I've already downloaded and extracted the current Marlin firmware, which a current number is 2.0.9.2. So if you click on open folder and you go to your downloads folder, your Marlin folder, and then your next Marlin folder, you can select the folder there. Then what you're going to need to do is go into well, first we got to set our default environment because this is for the Mega 2560. So to figure that out, we'll click on the Marlin folder, the source folder, the core folder, boards.h, and we'll search on spider. And as you can see, we have the spider right here. So we'll copy that. Then we'll close out of core and source in just a second. But let me just point out that the chipset that we're working with is the STM32F4 right here. That's our default environment that we need to look up a little bit later. But I'm going to go over to configuration.h and I'm going to set up the motherboard by searching on motherboard. And then I'm going to replace the ramps configuration. I'm going to set the serial port to negative one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to search on num underscore servo. And this will bring us to our servo section. So I'll remove the comment with a control slash. We only have one servo, so I'm going to change that to a one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up our build environment. So back over here. We have the Mega 2560, so we're going to go to the INI folder. That's where all these are pointing to right now. And we'll find the STM32F, which is our chipset for an INI file. And we'll search on FISEC. And as soon as we find our board, which is going to be down here, it's the FISEC underscore S6 underscore 8000. We'll copy that. Then we'll go back over to platformio.ini, highlight the Mega 2560, and paste it over that. Now before we build, we do need to clean out our .pio folder, so we're going to click the little garbage can for clean down here. And now that that's gone, we're going to click on the checkbox to actually build it. So this may take a few seconds to actually build. Just keep in mind, if it fails the first time, click the checkbox again, because sometimes things build out of order. 
And if you do have it fail after the second time clicking the checkbox, remember to find the first error that you see in red here and correct that. That's usually what causes the other errors thereafter. And the yellow that you just saw go by is actually a warning. It's not a big deal, it happens often. So now that this is built, we're gonna click on the .pio folder. Then we're going to go into the FISEC folder. And inside the FISEC folder, we can see the .bin. So we're gonna reveal that in the file explorer, but we're gonna go back over to the workbench and set some stuff up. Because we know where the actual pins are on the board now, because we know that this is gonna be ground here, voltage, and then our PA or PB pin right here, the one that we read off, it's already automatically set in our file for our pins file, we're gonna take this and we're gonna align it such that we can insert it right here, and then we'll have it all configured. So now the other thing about this board that's special for actual servos is that we have to connect power because this will not run off five volts. So I'm gonna connect the power with my ferro cables. So there's one, I'll tighten that down. And the ferro cable protects you from a disastrous situation, so I highly recommend getting these. These ferrule cables are amazing because wires will not fray. I can't see, so let me go over this way. The wires won't fray to touch each other because they're crimped inside it. So. Now that we have that connected, what we need to do is set up the actual build. So I'm gonna pop out the SD drive. I'm going to put it in here so we can load the actual firmware and place this in the computer, which you may hear a beep. Now we can go back over to the desktop. We can right click on firmware.bin and we can send it to our drive. So on our drive over here, you see there's a firmware.bin and an old.bin. When the firmware.bin finishes loading, it's renamed to old.bin so it doesn't reload continuously. So if you ever wanted to reload old.bin or use it for a different printer, you would name it to firmware.bin. So what we're gonna do now is go back over to the desktop. We're gonna pop out the actual drive and we're going to place it inside of here. Now normally I would tell you to move the jumper for USB power, but we're gonna do it through the power supply. So I'm just gonna connect this up, it won't power the board, and then I'm gonna plug it in. So I'm gonna take the power cord, plug it into the computer, or power strip, pardon me. You'll hear a beep in a second. And then what we'll do is we'll actually go over to Pronterface to test this. So let me bring this up so you can see it. So inside of Pronterface, obviously we don't know what the COM port is at the moment, and it may show in our actual dropdown, but I actually wanna show you how to find it real quick. So I'm gonna click on desktop over here so you can see better. I'm going to then go to device manager. I'll bring that up so you can see it. And inside Device Manager, we can see that it's actually COM port 6 that we just connected. So what we can do is we can highlight this, then we can backspace and say 6, and then we can say connect. So what you're seeing now is it's connecting and the printer is now online. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna learn to move the servo and that involves a G code. So down in the bottom right, I'm gonna type M 280 then I'm gonna say P and that's the position and it's the first servo so it's zero because arrays start at zero in computer speak then we're gonna say s and this is gonna be the angle so we're gonna try 45 degrees and see what happens so let me click on that real quick here so it moves approximately 45 degrees so let's see if we can do 90 degrees. 
And the reason that it's off is the actual ribs underneath that little white piece on the servo are causing it to not align at the actual zero position. But you can adjust that with angles. So that's why we're doing 90 now. So that one's a little off, but we can actually guesstimate what it is by changing the 90 to an 80. And that'll give us our 90 degrees that we're normally looking for. So if you want to move back to zero, you can always change S to zero, and that'll bring you back to your zero position. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And for my patrons and the people on PayPal that like to make donations, I'm putting a thank you note at the end of the tutorial because I'm grateful that you're helping offset the cost to make these tutorials. So everyone take care, be safe, and have a nice day.